I'm Russ Kickle, and on this episode of American Reef, I'm talking pest control, specifically bristle worms. Bristle worms, right? So let's paint the scenario. You've got a couple wires, you want to do some deep cleaning on your tank, put your hand in there, you're moving things around, blowing things around, right? And you're all done, you pull your hand out and you wipe it off, and you're like, ow, what was that, right? And it's just little bristles. You know, you can thank the bristle worm for that. Um, ultimately, most tanks always get them. Where they come from, it can be a million places, but Ultimately, I look at them as a cleanup crew, so I don't have too many problems with them. I like them because they get into places where food may get and they can eat them. However, some people think they are pests. So if you consider them as pests, I'm going to tell you some ways basically to keep them at bay. Now, if you're experienced in the hobby, you know that basically everything you know in our reef tank has a predator. And you know, there are a lot of little nuisance critters, right? Well, I don't care if it's algae, aptasia, those little aster stars, two bristle worms. I mean, again, depending on your philosophies, what you like, what you don't like. Some people think they're pests, other people think they're cleanup crews. But either way, in this particular case, right, um, what you want to try to do is use nature's, you know, predator of the bristle worm. And what that can be is something as simple as one arrow crab. Sometimes they're called spider crabs, but they're about 20 bucks. And uh, at the end of the day, they do a real good job keeping any of those bristle worms, you know, or at least keeping the population of the bristle worms down to a minimum. Um, with bristle worms, you gotta be careful because sometimes if they are big, that one arrow crab's not gonna do anything. Remember, uh, Mike Paletta said that, uh, you know, when he was cleaning his tank at one time, he found a bristle worm that was as thick as his finger, right? And, you know, you get something like that, you need a fleet of them. And unfortunately, you, you can't put a fleet of arrow crabs together because they're sort of like bettas, meaning they'll fight each other and, and one will win and the other one will be, you know, for the lack of a better word, a meal. Um, <laughs> With that being said, you also got to be careful because even though they are reef safe and they are a good bristle worm predator, you'll have issues where when those bristles or those bristle worms are done and there's not a lot of them in there, they'll start eating other things. So they could pick at polyps, slow moving fish, um, uh, you know, your cleanup crew, that sort of thing. So you got to keep your eye out and make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, but again, they're mostly safe. Uh, like I said, for the most part, uh, they're inexpensive. They're like 20-ish bucks, something like that. Um, they do grow fairly big, meaning six to like 10 inches. So even though you can only put one in a tank, it's still real, relatively large. Um, they're cool as heck, all kind of personality to them. Um, so they're great to watch. And again, nature's predator against the bristle worm. Um, you know, some things to keep in mind with them, like I said, besides the fact that you want to treat them sort of like a betta, right? Uh, and again, they're opportunistic feeders. Um, after all those bristle worms are done, you want to make sure they got a good bit of food. Like for me, since I use that HPD on a clip, what that will do is they'll come up and they'll actually eat that. So that kind of works because they like meaty foods, right? And again, the HPD is just naturally meaty. Um, you know, the other thing uh, about the bristle worms is the fact that uh, they will clearly 
wipe out your cleanup crew if there is nothing to eat. So you want to make sure that there's always something there for them to eat. But other than that, um, it's relatively easy to get rid of bristle worms. Um, and again, and just think of it this way. If you're new to the hobby, there's always like the gravity to go to some kind of chemical or some kind of gadget or something like that. But most of the times they are just not effective. You know, they're a temporary solution. It doesn't work. Whereas when you put things like, again, natural predators in the tank, you can keep it at bay and it'll work constantly for you. Just like algae, for example, right? Lots of algae. I have a tank full of tangs and you tend not to have lots of algae. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> You could get some, but it'll keep them at bay. So going that nature's route usually is the best approach to all this sort of stuff. And, you know, if there's any questions you have regarding the uh, arrow crab or keeping, you know, uh, the bristle worms at bay, just feel free to give me a shout at AmericanReef at me.com. Uh, also, as you heard me say many, many times, give my sponsors a chance to earn your business. We've got Bulk Reef Supply, Premium Aquatics, Tunzi, as well as Top Shelf Aquatics. Again, all great, honest people who deserve a chance to earn your business. Why? Because they are good, honest people, and those are the kind of people you want to promote. So to that point, if you need any kind of reef keeping supply, check them out. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. And again, I'm Russ Kickle. And thanks for watching this episode of American Reef.